our village, Matamo Cultural Village. I'm the guide at the moment. I will lead you down to our Swati village to learn and experience more about my Swati culture. You are welcome to ask any questions concerning the Swati culture. You are welcome to make pictures as many as you want. Are you ready? Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before you enter in the homestead, you have to ask a permission first. Mm -hmm. So now I will count for you in three, and after you shout very loud and say, Ekaya. Ekaya, it means hello, it's anybody home. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Ekaya. Ekaya. You are welcome. Ah. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to our Swati village. This is the homestead. This homestead, it belongs to my father, Mr. Shongwe. He's the chief of the village. My father, he practiced polygamy, two wives and 25 children. We have the grandmother, that's the mother of the chief. The grandmother, she's very important to the family because she's the one who controls the village. Like if my father, he have a problem in the marriage, he go to the grandmother, tell the grandmother all the problems. And the grandmother, she offer him a best solutions and then he become happy again in the marriage. According to our Swati culture, before a man, he decided to take the second wife. He go to the first wife to ask her permission as the sign of respect. So the first wife, she can say yes and she can say no. But even if she said no, it doesn't matter to the man because to ask, he just showing the respect. Our culture, it allowed him to have many wives as he wants. So the first wife, if she agrees, she gets a promotion to become the queen of the family. So in our culture, the man is allowed to practice polygamy, but in one condition. If the man, he can be able to pay 15 cows per each wife. That's the bride price. And in our Swati culture, we have a different costume. So when the woman she's married, she wear a black skirt, maroon sarong, she do the power style in the head, and then she decorate with the white belt around. That woman she's married. All the girls that are not married here in the village, we wearing bright colors because bright colors it's easy to attract the men to come and propose love mm. <laughs>
So because in our culture, all the girls that are not married, they sleep in one hut. So the bride, she will go and sleep with the girls that are not married. So during, during the, sorry, early in the morning, the married woman only, they go into the girl's hut, knock, calling the name of the bride. So when the bride, she responding by opening the door, she will find the husband standing next to the door, holding a spear. So the husband, he will take the spear and give it to the bride. A spear, it's a symbol of a pen. So the married women, they will take the bride into the crowd. So when they get there, the married women, they start singing. So when they sing, the bride, she have to look down to show the respect of the family. And then she walk around a little bit, holding the spear. So the bride, she's supposed to cry. Because if she's not crying, it means that she's not left the husband. Yes. It's hurt, yes, but in other way, the family, they introducing the bride to our ancestors. Because in religion, we are Christian, but we also believe in our ancestors. So if the bride, she cries and the tears falling down, it means that she's writing the vows. Like I'm Patricia, I came to join the family. Whatever it happened, I will die here. I'm not going anywhere. That's why in our Swati culture, we said divorce is not accepted because the bride she already bind with our ancestors. <laughs>